Greetings, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Dreamscapes. Today we have our friend Gabrielle uh, from Sydney, Australia. Uh, we're going to get right back to her in two seconds. Would you kindly like, share, subscribe, tell your friends? Always need more volunteer dreamers, viewers for the video game streams, uh, etc. Uh, 17 currently available works of historical dream literature, the most recent the Fabric of Dreams by Catherine Taylor Craig, uh, lovingly reproduced, recreated, and enhanced, if I may say so myself, by yours truly, your friendly neighborhood dream wizard. Uh, all this and more at BenjaminTheDreamWizard.com, including downloadable MP3 versions of this very podcast, uh, a complete listing of all the books, uh, an encyclopedia, all kinds of good stuff. You should go check it out. Uh, also, if you would head on over to BenjaminTheDreamWizard.Locals.com, uh, that's attached to my Rumble account. We're trying to uh, build a community there uh, at some point. That's where I'd like to uh, draw most of my guests dreamers from people who are fans of the show and would like to have their turn in the, in the spotlight, so to speak. That is enough shilling out of me. Uh, Gabrielle, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and and I'm, because... a mixture of, I'm a mixture of excited <laughs> and uh, there's a bit of trepidation. So. <laughs> well, that's, that's a great thing to just, just throw, throw out there uh, yeah. uh, for, for, yeah. for looking at. I mean, initially you, I think reached out to me, you found me and you're like, Oh, this is fascinating what this guy does. Do, do I have that right? Or I get, I talk to so many people. I forget who's who sometimes. I, I said something like, is this for real? Like, just so that I'm clear, do you do, do, you do dreams analysis live? And you said, yes. I said, well, that sounds really interesting. And it's interesting to me because I have been working with my dreams ever since I was a young child. Yeah. I took note of a really big dream first time I was eight years old. So I'm into it. And, uh, yeah, I had a dream the other night I'd like to talk about and I've got some ideas what it might be um, but it'd be really great to get an outsider's perspective that's very cool it's neat when people um like my brain's already exploding all kinds of things to talk about but it's very neat when people already kind of feel like they've got a handle on what it likely means from 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 their own understanding and then they bring it to me and say well let's see what this guy can do with it let's uh, i call that the uh, stump the wizard uh, type type of things um but speaking of you know wizards and what i do um specifically i mean that's uh, uh that's partly serious and partly facetious uh you know i don't actually uh summon minions and and, and throw fireballs you know but i think what i do is is, is carrying on the grand tradition of the archetypal magician uh you know the wizardry in that sense you yeah. know and i aspire yeah. to, to to be the you know the uh, i consider socrates a wizard and gandalf literary uh, both possibly <laughs> fictional literary characters but uh um <clears throat> in that search for truth and and trying to do the right thing and, and be of benefit into the world fight the great evils of the world you know in my own way um <laughs> right one dream at a time well which is cool so uh, in that vein you don't Maybe you need me, not you, the, the grand, the royal we, um, need someone to to introduce the concept that this is legitimate, that this is something that can be beneficial, that it has purely psychological roots. It doesn't have to be magical, even though I I think there's a bit of magic to it. It's, 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 you know, the uh, associative inspiration. No one knows where it might, yeah. might as well be the muses on whispering in our ear from Mount Olympus. Who, who knows where inspiration comes <laughs> from? <clears throat> so I lean into that type of thing. But you don't actually need a wizard to interpret your dreams for you. You don't need an interpreter. You can do this yourself. You can write them down. You can think about them. You can follow your own associations. You can kind of do what I do. I, I just do a little helping hand. Uh, it's like someone can go to the gym where they can have a personal trainer say, you know, let's, let's do lats today. That, that kind of thing. <laughs> I got the, got the froggy's throat today. Hmm. That's okay. That's okay. We're good. Um, you need to take a moment. I'm happy to. No, I'm just going to, I'm just going to cough randomly. It's what I do. It's what I do. Your way through our... <laughs> if you make me laugh too much, <laughs> okay, I'll have a real episode. <laughs> I'll, have a mini, I'll have a mini blackout in my chair. That happens sometimes. <laughs> laugh myself into a into a into a head rush um okay so uh we are uh a, a bit limited on time so we're gonna jump straight into the dreams that's something we usually do i usually spend more time chatting people up getting to know them uh letting them you know plug this that or the other but we're just gonna get right down to it so my process is uh you know first and foremost i shut up and listen uh you tell me the dream as you experienced it and then we we see what we can make of it together so i'm ready when you are all right so i always write my dreams in the present tense Okay. Because it, that's a way of taking me back into it as if I were there. Yeah. Um, and just so that you know, probably a little bit of a backdrop because there is the context, the place in the dream. Um, 
there is reference to one of the hostages at the moment, you know, in the Middle East. Ah. And I'm Jewish. And so that whole thing has been really keeping me up at night. And the uh, one of the role players here is one of the hostages, a young man who had his arm cut off. Mm. And uh, that was his dominant arm. So I think there's something in that um, for us sure. to explore. But so let me read it out. Let me, would you like me to read my musings afterwards as well? Or do you just want me to read the raw dream? I would say uh, that's a good question. I am, my process is one under development. So firstly, I have no idea what I do or how I do it. It's kind of become a thing and I kind of just flow with it, but I'm always trying to refine it. So maybe if I were to describe the best way to do it, it would be just the dream as you experienced it. And then we'll get into the commentary as we go through it again. We're going to go through it a second time right. to start discussing it. So that would be okay. probably my ideal, ideal method. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. And the young man's name is Hirsch. So when I reference Hirsch, you'll know who I mean. Okay. If a friend and I have been fascinated with a magnif magnificent home that fronts onto a cobbled square in the middle of a shopping area, a well-to-do shopping area. It has come to, onto the market and is for sale. We walk past one day and catch a glimpse of the courtyard and entrance hall as the door is open. We really want to visit. We go one day to an open house. It's being sold by the family of Hostage Hirsch. There are many other people at the uh, open house. Hirsch's parents are clearly wealthy. Their home is magnificent in some parts. When I walk into a living area, it is so stunning, and I'm absolutely gobsmacked. High ceilings, lots of natural light, opens onto the garden, and is so tastefully de decorated, but it's empty in terms of people. Other parts of the house aren't as magnific magnificent, but still wonderful. I walk from room to room, making sure I see every room in the house. With the kitchen, it seems odd that we have to walk outside to get to other parts of the house from the kitchen. When it rains, there's an awning, but that's all. Then I see others using an indoor passage, and I realize I had missed it, and it is possible to walk uh, indoors. In other words, to leave the kitchen indoors without going outside. The parents' room is lovely, and then I'm searching for Hirsch's room. I open the bedroom and look for his belongings, but then I realize it isn't his bedroom, it's one of his sister's rooms. When I find his bedroom, I quickly close the door as I don't want to be contaminated with or affected by the energy of his death. Benjamin the Dream Wizard wants to help you pierce the veil of night and shine the light of understanding upon the mystery of dreams. Every episode of his Dreamscapes program features real dreamers gifted with rare insight into their nocturnal visions. New Dreamscapes episodes appear every week on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, and other video hosting platforms, as well as free audiobooks exploring the psychological principles which inform our dream experience, and much, much more. To join the wizard as a guest, reach out across more than a dozen social media platforms and through the contact page at BenjaminTheDreamWizard.com, where you will also find the wizard's growing catalog of historical dream literature available on Amazon, documenting the wisdom and wonder of exploration into the world of dreams over the past 2,000 years. That's Benjamin the Dream Wizard on YouTube and at BenjaminTheDreamWizard.com. Okay. Um, it's a good one. Lots of details, very vivid on that. All, all kinds of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. what was I thinking? I'm thinking I might've missed a bit of stuff. I tried to capture the way you phrased things. Yeah. Um, uh, cause I think that has its own unique meaning. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I guess what we'll do is, um, we'll do, we'll just, charge ahead with the with the uh, going through it again so i can start to, to, to see it a little bit better through your eyes um 
Oh, I remember what I was going to ask. This person from real life who lost an arm, they lost an arm in real life and survived the experience or lost an arm and then did not come back alive? Um, we don't know. It's one of the Israeli hostages that's being held in Gaza. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, we don't know that he's dead or alive. It's an unknown. But there's obviously a lot of, I've been worried about him and I've been following his family story over the past few months because they're very relatable people to me. His parents are feel like they're academic, that, mm. you know, and they've just, <laughs> they feel like people I'd be friendly with, you know? Sure. And so I've been following that particular hostage, uh, hostage story the last few months and it's been top of mind for me. Absolutely. So we don't know if he's alive or dead. What I do know is that he's lost his left arm, which is his dominant arm. Okay. Are you also left-handed or no? No, I'm right-handed. Okay. Which I think the way you phrase it, you know, that his dominant hand, which is... It's his dominant. That's yeah, the issue. That's yeah. the issue, yeah. for sure, for sure. Do you yeah. know, uh, speaking of the setting, so if we're, and we're going right back to the beginning, um, is this taking place in Israel? This is their house in Israel or... You don't know. No, you know, it feels like it's got like a Santa Barbara feel to it. Mm. I mean, our last was in Santa Barbara, I don't know, it's decades ago. I can't even remember it, but it's got that feeling to it. And it's affluent. There's an affluent air to the neighborhood, to the to the house, of course, to the neighborhood. It's into the shopping area. It's an affluent air. So this place... Um... What what was the purpose of your visit to Santa Barbara when you did go? Oh, it was just a holiday with friends when I was much younger. Okay. We we did like my brother's ex girlfriend and his childhood sweetheart and I and a few others went traveling through America and we actually just landed up there. We went to Yosemite and it was just a very brief whistle stop. I, I don't even remember how long we were there. It might have just Man. been a day. Honestly, I think yeah. you've seen parts of America I never have. I, li I live I live, you know, just a few hundred miles away. I've never been to Yosemite. I mean, I've seen, we, really? I, I live in Oregon, so we've got lots of trees everywhere. I'm like, yep, yeah. it's, a, it's a forest. <laughs> I know yeah. Yosem Yosemite. <laughs> not, you're right. No, yeah, yeah. Yosemite's got its own charm. And well, the things you can't like the natural Beautiful. hot springs and the geysers, Old Faithful, that kind of mm. thing. You're, you're not going to see hiking. that kind of stuff. And the mountains. It's, yeah. it's really beautiful. I think it's maybe only a three or four hour drive from, you know, got Eastern Oregon, then kind of down South and boom, you're right there. And like, I don't know. I'm a homebody. I never, this is my little wizard's cave. I never leave here if I, if I can help it. I don't, I don't, I do, I do not actually enjoy travel like at all. Not, not just the wow. expense, but that's, yeah, that's my thing. I like my little comfy nest. So well, you travel in your dreams, don't you, Benjamin? Right. The funny thing for me is I am, I've become lately and say lately over the last few years, more aware that I have had dreams, but I don't remember my dreams. I cannot hang on to them. The, the, it is, um, unheard of. I have a snippet I can actually share. And, and a recent one was, I was standing by the open passenger side door, a uh, rear passenger side door of a white car. And that's it. That's my only experience of that dream. That's, that is an, a, a miracle that that made it out. Uh, uh, I'm usually just way too deep in sleep to, yes. so yes. Uh, there's, it's uh, more, slightly more common that I remember I was having some kind of dream and just nothing sticks. And then it's most common that, uh, I wake up and I've, there's no memory of, of, of a dream at all. So that's pr probably part of my fascination. I can count like literally on one hand, the dreams that I do remember. Uh, when I did my 100th episode, I, I shared a couple of those. I'm like, well, here's the two dreams I do remember and the uh, understanding I brought to them, which actually set me on this path from like 20, 25 years ago when I was in college, uh, doing a history and systems of psychology class. And, uh, mm -hmm. they were getting into, well, let's talk about Freud and Jung. And why don't you guys go home and do one dream interpretation of your own dreams or a friend or make one up, you know, Jung was like, okay, we could just do active imagination. Um, mm. I brought back two dreams, one Freudian, one Jungian, and the teacher was like, A plus. I mean, not A plus, A. He gave me an A. But he's like, you really understand what this is? I'm like, I felt good about that. And had a bit of a nat <laughs> that's my story. I have a bit of a natural talent for it. I'm going going all, the, all the way back there. Um, okay, okay, so. Um, you want me to reread it? I, well, I'm going to go through my notes. And if I get things wrong, please tell me. If I. Um, forgot something you think is a key point let me know and then we can also expand on on each thing so i was just getting the setting uh you know bam you are here this is a dream what's happening where am i and you've got a person from 
for, so we've, we've got a very interesting uh, spread all over the map here. You're in Australia, but you've been to America and you've been to, say, specifically Santa Barbara, and you're setting the dream in that place you visited when you were younger, but featuring a person from Israel. Uh, so we're just we're just all over the map here. I right. Don't get crazy. Here's another one. This, oh, this is baby. Yeah, they're baby gonna cake. they're they're gonna come lay all over my paperwork. Oh, you know it. They can probably <laughs> feel that I'm a cat person, <laughs> right? Everybody loves the babies. I don't think I've had anyone say, "Get those cats out of here." <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so you, so there's something going on with this of like looking at it through through these multiple different lenses. There's a reason you chose to to put this this story in in this place you only briefly visited because it made some kind of an impression on you for the type of place that it was. And it, you, you do, you mentioned the idea of like affluence and uh, the idea of the, um, yeah, upmarket. <laughs> it's it, the place. I mean, the, the feeling of Santa Barbara was minuscule. You know, I didn't even capture that when I wrote it down. It was more the feeling of affluence. I yeah. was in an affluent neighborhood. That's more, the issue that's more the theme here absolutely that's where i was going with it the idea that um it isn't about santa barbara as much as what santa barbara represents of course this is all representational stuff and it's it's a certain kind of a upscale affluent place and and that has also its own kind of associations with it that you know i should probably be asking you rather than telling you but what comes to my mind is the idea of um a place you would be surprised to have certain traumatic bad things happen, like a war. Like you can't imagine Santa Barbara at war or or being raided yeah. by armed people like 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 yeah. happened in Israel. So it's a it's a very much yeah. out of place, uh, even a shock yes. shocking turn of events. Is that Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean it's a very it's very strange that I'm dreaming about a hostage family whose son is missing with an arm missing when it's in this peaceful and very, very beautiful home. I mean, the home itself, there are a lot of people visiting the, the show house, but it's be- there's a serenity to it. That's the word that comes up, a serenity. Yeah. That, and an aesthetic. I, I wrote down to ask about it, like peaceful, so, but serenity. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also writing notes now as well. Yeah, for sure. Baby girl, I got to get off my paperwork. Um, okay. So, and the initial behavior in the dream was you were out walking with a friend when you first became aware of the house in this neighborhood? Yes. Yes. Any particular friend and or? No, somebody that was an anonymous other friend. Don't know who it was. I think female, female friend. Yes. Was a female friend, but I, no one in particular. Okay. And that can usually be significant too. Like if it was a specific person that would say something, what's your relationship with that person? Why would, why would you want them there with you? But in this one, it's probably more akin to the, the broader concept of, of friendship or being not alone or sharing a social experience. I don't know where you would go with that if you had to describe it. Well, it's interesting because at the moment uh, I've been through a huge spiritual upgrade in the last I'd say year and a half, mm. and it's affected my friendships. Oh wow! That is a yes, and that's been on my mind, and you know. But it, that's what the general, the broader context of friendship at the moment is bringing up for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So in this particular dream, you've got someone with you that you identify as a friend, and and not yes. like. Um, Yes. What is it? I like to do counterfactuals. Like it, it wasn't um, a real estate agent showing you the neighborhood. It wasn't uh, a, a, no, a dog, we, a dog catcher trying to you no, know, make you put your dog a on a leash. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, it was a friend and it feels like maybe we've been shopping together. It was that kind of a scenario. Yeah. And then the, yeah. the uh, so you're out shopping. Shopping is, um, if we just focus on that for a second in terms of like a behavior, it, it can be uh, just a social experience. You go shopping with a girlfriend and really, do you buy anything? Maybe you do, but that's not the point. No. Yeah. It's not the, and in fact, it was, it was a back, it was like, I only knew we'd been shopping because when I looked around, this courtyard was amongst upscale shops. Mm-hmm. But I didn't go through the act of shopping. 
yeah. with her. Yeah, for sure. So, the, the so there's the yes. the social aspect, but then there's also like we've gone shopping because there's a there's a goal. You know, like I'm going to buy a car. You don't go to the grocery store. You go to a dealership because you're on a mission to get a car. But then there's so would you say it was it no, seems social felt like more, more social more social shopping. More gotcha. social. That leans yeah. in it leans into the, the the friendship too. And so you've got um, so we start kind of telling the story of it. You're you're with a friend who who doesn't feel like a friend you're leaving behind it feels like a, a, a more of a, a peer type of a friend and you're out doing the social experience of shopping seven girls day and you come across a house that is for sale and th- not yet not, not yet. yet that's okay i want to get the a, secret sequence of events yeah not yet so the house itself is not yet for sale but it's a house it feels like we've been watching this house with wonder for a while And in this dream, we are now able to see into a part of the house because a a door is open. So, you know, we can see into the entrance hall and we can also see the beautiful cobbled um, courtyard that is in front of the house because a door is like a gate is obviously open. So we've been fascinated with the house for a while. Now we've got a glimpse into it. For the first time. Yeah. So there's the, uh, the experience if, if, if I'm seeing it correctly in my mind, like there's a, um, there's a courtyard and, and then a, a gate also kind of, and the gates open and the front doors open. Well, the, the, no they might, I think there's a, I don't know if it's a gate, but we're able to see into the courtyard for the first time. So there's, there's a view into the courtyard before we hadn't kind of seen it. Now we are glimpsing into the courtyard. So there must've been something open. But it's, that's, I don't know what that is. It's just we can see into it. But the actual front door of the house is open as well. So we can see into part, the, just a bit of the entrance hall. Yeah. So there's a, um, there's a sense of something hidden being revealed or, or something yes. of, of, of fascination, uh, something of um, interest, like a mystery yes. starting, starting to be solved. You, 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 yes. you kind of get that feeling? Yes, yes, yes. And the feeling that goes with that, Benjamin, is <laughs> wanting to go in, wanting oh, yeah. to solve it, like leaning into the experience, not being afraid of it, being intrigued by it. Yeah, and this is, these are all, um, it's all surrounded with markers of things that are, I, I would say maybe unique to you and maybe, maybe not, maybe more general, but also the, the idea of uh, markers of, of attraction in a way of like, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's a very nice neighborhood. Have you, when you were, <clears throat> when you were um, tra- traveling at all, did you ever get to San Simeon Hearst Castle? Does that sound familiar? It's a place in uh, California on the, on the coast. And it was the uh, newspaper magnate, uh, William Randolph Hearst. And he built a large sprawling, uh, house basically, but like to call it a house, it, it was more of a mansion and it was more of like a multi structural complex. Uh, so they call it the Hearst Castle, like going back to old, uh, you know, medieval, medieval style castles, even from the uh, late 17, 1800s, you know, not, not quite medieval, medieval uh, stone, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, and that's like, that's a tourist destination. People go, and my parents took me there when I was young, and it's like, this place is just amazing it's huge and it's pretty it's ornate opulent Mm. giant swimming pool with statues and uh Mm. you know long large dining room dining hall i mean a place you'd so if you're just standing on the outside and like i wish i I could get it i wish i could see inside someday and then one day the door opens you're like whoa so there's all these things of like uh there's there's something i i suppose something of alluring alluring yeah something of value there that you're like now i get to satisfy my curiosity about what this value is why what is the what is the secret of this place that that what is it that i want to know what am i going to find inside um yes you got something going with that yes baby girl yes that really lands yeah yeah that's the that's the feeling i'm getting so that's the felt sense definitely yeah and I, i i forget to ask people about colors i forget to ask people about emotions um so because I, I it's intrigue it's, it's intrigue, intrigue. It's, yeah. it's like it's intrigue there's something mysterious 
and like, yes, I'm yeah. going to finally, <laughs> I can finally see it. And then the house goes on market. Yeah. Which means I got full access to it. Yeah. And the sense that you got before is we've, I've seen this before. I've not had the opportunity to satisfy that curiosity, but now you get this glimpse. And then that, um, did anything else happen at that time? Uh, this is kind of the introductory scene and we haven't even moved, moved on from just like, just I'm standing outside the house I can now see in. And we've just been describing all the things done with a friend. We're in the shopping district. There's a beautiful house. And we've always, and this, this knowing that you've always wanted to see it. And suddenly you're seeing, you, you are granted a almost random opportunity to see more of it than you maybe thought you ever would. Um, and that only spurs the interest to see even more. Um, does anything else happen during that, during that experience, or or it moves almost straight to a scene it scene moves, change, scene change, <laughs> scene change. So, how did you? What what is the next physical environment you find yourself in? You're, bam, you're at the in the at, house. At, you're in the house I'm at in, the open house. At the open house. And actually, I think there was a sequence. I know sequence matters in dreams, which is why I think I got usually, the sequence wrong. Usually connected thoughts, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, connected thoughts, exactly. Um, I actually think I went into the kitchen first, and there was a big, there was actually, a, that was the big scene in the dream, was what happened in the kitchen with the interlocking um, uh, corridor passage. So okay. I think that's that's actually where I went first. I went into the kitchen. Gotcha. And right. then uh, what what would you describe as the you know the size, the shape of the kitchen? Any features stand out? Um... Um, the kitchen and felt like um, it had like a Santa Barbara kind of feel, but it was modern. Um, it was very busy with people. That's where all the others who were at the same toe day were congregating seemed to be where everybody was in this kitchen. Mm. And, um, yeah, so that was important. I think I feel a bit of navy blue coming through. Mm. Yeah. Um, like navy blue tiles, but I might, I'm not sure. Maybe I dreamt that, I'm not sure. But it feels that way now as I'm recanting the dream. Sure. Um, lots of activity. Um I think there's a terracotta floor. There's a terracotta floor. That's that's why it's got that Santa Barbara feel. Um, it abuts onto an outdoor patio. And I actually entered and then exited the kitchen through the outdoor patio, which then led me back into the house. And it was quite a weird way. To, it, it struck me that that was a weird access point like why couldn't I enter inside the house why did I have to go outside the house um we just go back um um it seems odd that we have to walk outside to get to the other parts of the house in the kitchen mm -hmm. um and then I've thought what if it rains like how is this practical what if it rains? And then I realized there was like a, an awning. So you could still walk outside even if it rained. But it still felt like really peculiar. And then I saw others using an indoor kind of a passage, which I saw as a transition in my life. Mm. <laughs> but a, a passage. And then I realized, oh, why didn't I see that? You can actually, <laughs> you can do it that way. One one thing I may have forgotten, and uh, it's my fault for maybe mo uh, moving on too fast, was at what point in anything we've discussed so far did the, the, did the sure knowing that this was Hirsch's family's house was it from the very beginning, or did that realization? Yes, it was from, 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 the, from the very beginning. beginning. Okay. Yes, we go in, we go one day to an open house. It's being sold by the family of Hostage Hirsch. So I knew when I was going to view the house that it was his parents, his family selling. And you knew that from the very beginning of the dream or only when it became apparent that it was the open house, then there was a discovery of that. I think fact. it was the open house. I feel it was the open house. Yes. Okay. 
Let me change. Because it was something, yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay, not not sure what it means, but definitely got to get the um, sequence of events straight in my head. Um, yes. Yeah, and there may be there may be something now. I mean, just if I dwell on that for a moment, there's uh, the what am I trying to say? It's not like you were fascinated with the house because it was his, but you had a fascination, a pre existing fascination, and then the ability to look deeper into it, you discovered it is the house of this person whose story I am also interested in. So there's like a re re yes. revelatory yes. Path pathway going on there, something like that. Correct. Yeah. Correct, Benjamin. That's exactly it. <clears throat> yeah. Because, uh, yeah. yeah, what would be the other counterfactual? What would be the other way around? Um, the other way around is that you you didn't care about the house as such, only be it was an object of fascination because it was the house of this person's family. But it's the other. No. But it's the other way around. Okay. Yes. Yeah, there was yeah. an uh, the fascination was more like the way it looked and felt, and there was yeah. something mysterious and cute and beautiful. It was a mix of just beautiful things that intrigued and fascinated yeah. me. And that's what I'm trying to. Uh, and that's why the sequence can matter sometimes too, because you get these things of like, okay, which concept is nested under which other concept? So it's more like the Correct. broad level fascination with this type of thing oh look this fits within that category we'll go, and we go a little narrower as we get down towards what are we actually looking at here what's the whole point um okay exactly. so just to get that get that straight in my head um read my own handwriting here so the the first uh so we have seen change uh then the first uh experience or whatever of this new this new scene is you have the experience of coming in from the outside and having this thought about that transition or whatever of like, this is not entirely practical. Why is it, why is it I can only get into the kitchen from the outside, from the patio? Yeah. Well, I was in the kitchen and then I realized I could only exit and like, I could only, the okay. only way to leave the kitchen was outside. So I realized I'd entered in a, the wrong way. I didn't actually, I don't remember going through the outside to get into the kitchen. I was now gotcha. just, You're just in, the, in kitchen. the kitchen. Gotcha. Yes. So there's two, two things there uh, that, that kind of jump out to me right away is the idea of, okay, why the kitchen? It's not the living room. It's yes. not a billiard room. It's not a, uh, you know, a basement home, yes. home, home studio, whether that is a, uh, a, a, a theater room studio yes. or, or a yes. recording studio. I mean, it's, it's very specifically the kitchen and this, this sense that it it's in only accessible from the outside. So there's something about the um, root of accessibility and the nature of the, the room itself that, that were significant yes. to you. Um, yes. What is, what comes to mind when I think of outside, the idea of being an outsider uh, comes to yes. my mind. Um, yes. And you're, you're feeling something there. Yes. Maybe I, maybe I stop. I don't know if you want to say something about that, about the nature of the, uh, how you got into the room well, and, and the room itself. Well, let me talk about the room itself yeah, because yeah. I love cooking. It's a creative outlet for me. It is the way I nourish myself and my friends. I love entertaining. So that it has symbolism from that perspective mm. for me. It is an act of self. It is a place I go to when I want to engage in self-care. Which and, is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got, we've actually got, um, self-care is a great thing that you did that and an outlet for enter. So there's entertaining, which is the social aspect, but also it's, um, um, it's also uh, self -ex expression in a way, but, but specifically an expression of love towards the people you care about. Um, like I cook for you I, because I want to fill your belly with something that I made. Yes. And I get so excited when I have people sitting around the dinner table and they go, Oh my God, this is so delicious. And I'm a really great cook, if I might say. And I make cracker desserts and that I love the and I cook <laughs> I, I make I make regularly, I make I go to this coffee shop most mornings and um, my act of love and thanks for them is to make them cakes. Uh, and I actually tried a different cake last weekend, um, but it was too sweet. And I know that they don't like uh, sweetness. Mm. So I tried putting in pineapple and passion fruit, but it was still a little bit too sweet. So I actually didn't give it to them. I'm always doing that. Always. So it's a place of real expression. 
uh, expression of love, expression of creativity. And it's a place that I go to when as an act of self care, if I'm feeling flat, I go and bake a cake or I go and make a dessert or I make a really great vegetarian dish. Um, something that's going to be nourishing and really yummy to eat. So if we look at all of that kind of, kind of, um, you know, idea, idea cloud connected to kitchen and then the idea of the impracticality of only being able to access it from the patio, from an external source. Like it's not it, in the beginning, it, it, looked or felt like it was not actually connected to the rest of the house but then you find out yes. secretly it was but 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 yes. the, just that initial impression the thought had to first cross your mind why is this place not connected to the rest of the house because when i take you through the rest of the house you'll see the other acts of uh, aspects of myself that feel void so it's more um this one part of you, or the, the kitchen connected part, is not strongly connected to the rest of it, to the rest of you not, in that sense? I think, uh, let's explore, let's put that on ice, let's yeah. check that out. That's a possibility. We'll just call I it. walk into three other rooms, Yeah, and I have different experiences in each, mm -hmm. and um, actually I go into four other rooms, and so, but nothing feels as busy and boisterous and lively and connected, even though it wasn't connected initially uh, to me as the kitchen. It wasn't surprising to me that I went into the kitchen first. Okay. No, yeah. That, I it mean, feels like that's my heart space. If I can get a little bit woo-woo, the uh, kitchen represents my heart space. I think so. Absolutely. You know, and it's uh, it's where <laughs> it's where you feel, you know, you could just say it's where I feel the happiest. It's it's what gives my, my life yeah. the most, um, uh, you know, value or meaning or, and, and none of it can be wrong for you. You know, that, that kind of a thing doesn't, it's not like I'm going to yeah. tell you, you know, you should have had the living room as your centerpiece. That's it's not for me to say, like, why would I say that? <laughs> well, uh, I'll talk about the living room. Uh, we'll, that's where I went next. We'll get there yeah. too. Yeah, no, yeah. perfect. So yeah. I wanted to, yeah. um, so you're in the kitchen and, and what you're noticing about it first is the, um, approach. I don't know if we've quite nailed down why you had to get at it from the outside. That's okay. Well, we can leave that alone too. I don't think we have either. But yeah. I mean, the idea of being an outsider that crossed my mind just, just wordplay association. Yeah, um, it could be related to what we discussed earlier, which is you know, in my own ascension journey, I've lost connection and contact with people who've been an integral part of my life. Um, and that's linked to feeling on the out, right? Yeah, yeah. That's um a lot of a lot but of writers on dreams that say your know, dreams love puns they love wordplay like if you feel like <laughs> an outsider you are literally put yourself outside of a physically outside, outside of a situation to to make that connection. Um, but it's interesting that that because I thought of like I always think of passageways or that kind of scene as representing a transition in my life. It always feels like that's what it is. Yeah, And if I think about the transition, there's a lot going on in my life at the moment because I also recently left 27-year corporate career mm -hmm. in organizational psychology. Huge and I'm now, transition. Huge. I'm now on my own and I've reskilled. I learned how to become an energy master. And, um, you know, I coach people on how to master their energy and as a way of kind of shifting their state and moving forward in their life. And it's a very different skill set. It's a very different life I'm stepping oh, into. Oh, yeah. So there's a, there's, there's a big transition in my life, and I don't think we can ignore oh, no. this transition, this outside then inside transition. I think it's really probably, I would say, one of the most important parts of the dream. For sure. Yeah. And it, you might have seen me having a little laughing moment to myself. I imagined you showing up to a corporate boardroom where they're like, you know, finances and policy. And you're like, no energy, energy. Let's get in, Let's get into this. Let's talk about how you, how you feel and how we're going to maximize your spiritual potential. And they're like, this is, this is a corporate board, boardroom, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just like that. Yeah. How you would not I fit there. On the fringes. Yeah. I wasn't, I was, I, you know, I was in the kind of the, the fringes of organizational life because I was always in my role um, as a facilitator, uh, as a coach, was always, um, you know, kept neutral. And it was always a step away from what was happening. 
can be in good business. And, uh, and I always keep on to I always want to be working with a very serious team. <laughs> With my group that I use different language. So yeah, but I mean, it is. It's a big transition. I'm in this transition phase, and it's the discomfort yeah. of that seems to have come up in this dream. Yeah, I I, I just got a um an inkling of something that made sense, and I don't know how to. So for in 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 um hmm, what am I trying to say? <clears throat> in the sense of taking on a new career if we put it that way, you begin as an outsider to that new experience as well. So there's yeah. something going on there in terms of just, just needed to conceptualize that idea of going from, from um, outside for, for lack of a better word, outside an experience to now you are in a new experience. Uh, and that's why yeah. we use those in and out uh, phraseology in, 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 in that sense. Um, yes. I think there's validity. Yeah. And, and maybe, and, and there's this, uh, you know, this, this fascinating, very attractive house. That just, it's got, it, it, this is another thing I talk about in all the dream books I edit is like, we, psychology has been trying to wrap our heads around why is a person interested in something? Why do they, why do we have preferences for experiences? Why do we like yeah. one thing? Why do some people, you know, and we, we have a lot of biological stuff we get into of like, well, some people are thrill seekers and they're bio and then they're chemicals in their brain. I'm like, yeah, but the, well, you know, why would I enjoy sci-fi and fantasy more than uh, nonfiction history? Romance. Romance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Why, yeah. why do these things, well, you know, like why for me, okay. So long story short, we don't know what, but, but we recognize interest when it happens. We go that piques my interest. I can recognize a feeling of, I want to know more. I want to get closer to that thing, to see it, to experience it more. I was going somewhere with that. Um, so why, why be, okay. So the, the broad, the new experience, we were talking about the transition from the old to the yeah. new experience. Yeah. yeah. And then there's, there's different kinds of people. Like I do have a certain craving for novelty. I think we all do. I'd like to see and hear things I've never seen before, but I don't want to go anywhere new. I do not enjoy it. I would like to, what I, what makes me happiest is this is the same chair I sit in every day. I'm so happy to see this chair when I wake up in the morning because I know I get to sit in it and I wave at the chair at night because I'll see you in the morning. Uh, you know, that, that kind of a thing of like, for me, it's that, that consistency of a, of a, of a well tread space that is mine, yeah. that, that is very yeah. familiar. So that, and why, who knows? We say temperament, we say personality, we say all kinds of things. We have no idea. It's all, this is my interest. This is where it, where it goes. Okay. So I was going somewhere with all that, that idea in general. Um, so you've had this, you, you're in this broad transitional phase in your life in general, and there's probably something going on with this dream of like, you're trying to understand, okay, why, why has this captured my interest? What makes this, this house fascinating to me why is it why do i look at it and feel that's magnificent i have to see what's inside um so what i don't want to do is latch onto that in a too specific sense of like this is all about your spiritual journey necessarily there's probably also the house has got to be related to you in a sense yeah. of getting to know yourself oh, yeah better oh yeah but, but oh, yeah. that's also attached to this transitional journey of like so what it is is like you experiencing this i am attracted to this new way of looking at the world i, I i'm driven to understand it better okay let's look at me why am i doing this what is what is about that's what is it about me that, that brings me to this that drives me to want to engage in this i think does that, that feel like something yes when, when, yes. You, when you just it kind of feels, feel the dream it feels like something definitely i just wrote yeah. Why has this house captured my interest yeah. at this point in time as I'm transitioning? And then we kind of kind of hold, hold on loosely to the idea. Of, okay, what is the house? Is it your new career? Is it you? Is it both? Is it something else? I, I it don't... felt like it was me. It felt like it was aspects of me. I can tell you that's what it felt like. Yeah, and without getting to dream dictionary, houses often are representations of our our mental state, our physical body. It's it's not uncommon. Yeah. It's it's the idea of you know. Uh, we live in houses, so the houses are, are us or become us or we identify with them. Yeah. Something very common. Not always, but yeah. but very, very, very it felt often. that way for me. Yeah, yeah. Very often. And certainly it, it has to feel that way or it's not not true for you. Yeah. Um, exactly. So if, if we follow that a little bit where you're coming in from the outside, you're literally entering a new look at yourself, a new look at your interest in this 
direction. And the first place you stop is the kitchen because that's where you're most comfortable, most familiar. You're like, well, how can I relate this to what I've typically understand to be my most passionate creative space? Um, it's the first thing. And that's actually the most crowded space too. That's where all the people who are all similarly fascinated with the house have congregated in the kitchen. Like, of course the kitchen's beautiful. This is the, this is the reason to be here. This is the, this is the best part of the house. So there may be not, it's actually not the most beautiful part of the house. That's the interesting thing. The second room I go to is the most magnificent part of the house. Okay. So it's not the most beautiful part. It's the most, it's somehow attracted everyone, including me. So if it's not attractive, purely based on its beauty, what is the attraction of the kitchen? Why is, it's is the kitchen such question. a popular place? Yeah. It feels, let me just go into it for a moment. It feels Take your time. Yeah. social, warm welcoming atmospheric the word that came to my mind uh, was meaningful and, and or meaning just the sense of meaning like if a kitchen if something isn't the most um let's say a tool if a tool isn't the prettiest to look at it would still be the most useful perhaps so we don't look at a tool of a specific kind in terms of it's it'd be nice if it was also pretty but if a hammer gets the job done it doesn't matter how ugly or old or beaten up it is it's a hammer it's meant to pound nails if it does that job well it's a good hammer we judge the quality of something by what it does in a certain context and sometimes the uh utility of say a painting or a sculpture is to be beautiful or sometimes to be ugly on purpose and for for for, for a different reason um so there's the way you were describing all of the aspects of yourself that revolve around giving you a, 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 a peace of mind, a creative outlet, the ability to express. I know what it is. Go ahead. This is an aspect of my divine feminine. This is, it really feels like an aspect of my divine feminine. I don't know why I said that. Yeah, go with it. I just ramble until I inspire something in the other person. It is that's, something that's you're rambling I... about inspired my divine feminine to say, hey, that's me. <laughs> I think this is, if I think of my most balanced divine feminine, when I'm at my best, <laughs> it's when I'm creating, when I'm learning, when I'm trying new things, when I'm giving, when I'm in the company of others. It's all of those things. There's a, when I'm nourishing myself and others, mm -hmm. I think that the essence of my divine feminine is the capacity. It's this nourishing. It's that. Yeah. As opposed, I mean, I've got various facets of it, but I think that's where people feel my magic. Yeah. And for another person, just to, just to like, again, counterfactuals by comparison, another person could have said, why was I in the garden? Why was I digging up roses? Why, why, you know, why, why was I growing, exactly. growing tomato plants? And that could have been their kitchen for them, but for you, it's the Correct. kitchen. So, so if we're, I, I think there's something very powerful in that idea of the divine feminine. Um, this may be the aspect of your divine feminine that you are most comfortable with or the, 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 the that is um, the most yes. familiar to you. The one you yes. feel the most uh, competence in. This is like your, but you, you, as we go on through the rest of the dream, we realize the house is bigger. There's other rooms here that could also be say filled with the same energy, but you just haven't utilized it yet. You haven't found your way. Love that. Mm. Love that. And, and very much so. And there's a, um, there's a special thing I've been, I've been uh, hanging on to it. And it's the idea that you initially thought there was no way out of this space that the, why is this not connected to the rest of the house? But, but, um, it, it, specifically in the sense of I can't see how to connect this to the rest of the house. I can't see a passage through. Yes. Um, yes. And then you get shown yes. one by someone. And I want to know yes. how, who, what was that like? Um, if, if you, if you throw your mind into that, look, looking at that, like how did you become aware that, Oh, there is a connection. I became aware because I noticed people were walking through that part of the house. No one told me, no one showed me. I observed and I became aware. Okay. 
That's a great turn of phrase too. Um, what do you have to do to expand your understanding to learn something new? You have to uh, want to know. You you've got to do the observation, and and then and then the awareness kind of comes from that of looking, uh, kind of like a seeking you shall find type of thing. You got to look. Yeah. Or you're never yeah. going to find anything. If you never look, you're never going to find. It's kind of the, it's it's interesting the way they wrote that in that in that biblical phrase, seek and ye shall find. Yeah. And then everyone says, yeah. not always. I'm like, yes, but you have to seek or you will never find. And that seemed like a wonky That's way true. to phrase it. I don't know. Um, not That's trying to, true. you know, ret- retcon the, the, the Bible. Um, so that is interesting too. So it, it isn't that, let's say you could have been absolutely alone in the kitchen and that would have been its own kind of experience. You could have, conducted a systematic search and f- discovered a hidden passage or something, but that's not what happened. You notice that other people in the, in the, the, the way it, it popped into my head was the idea of other people have already showed you the way you know that other people have already been capable of doing this kind of a thing. So you, now you show yourself this representation of, Oh, I just have to watch what other people have done and I can learn from them. So it's, it's almost like, uh, I, I don't know. I want to stop there. Just let to see what you think about that. I've written it down. I think it has such validity. I mean, I think that's it. I've noticed that other people have already been capable of doing this kind of thing. And I can, I, you know, and that that's it. So it's the observation. It's the, um, it's less about people, t- there's a discovery process, but it's not through me, it's through others. That's a thought that's starting to form. I don't know what that means. Yeah. And again, the, the counterfactual side of things would be like, you could have had the experience of trailblazing. You could, I'm going to have yeah. to make my own path. It could, it could have been, yeah. again, another counterfactual. It could have been, I literally picked up the heaviest skillet I found and I beat a hole in the wall and I was able to walk through into the living room. That's its own yes. kind of, I'm going to make this happen by if I have to break down a wall. Uh, but you didn't. You just noticed, yeah. you know, this isn't as much of a complicated problem as I thought it looked like that's, initially. That was it. That's exactly right. I actually said... Um, um, I wrote that in some of my notes. Just hold on a second. Sure, um, please. Um, I wrote, I'm overcomplicating things. There's a more direct route between how I nourish myself, which is the, oh, my divine as- aspect of my divine feminine, and the next room that I go to, which is this beautiful family room. Um, so there's something around also, which we haven't discussed, which is taking the less complicated route as opposed like I've been taking this complicated convoluted path out, outside in the rain when there was actually a simpler and more direct path to the next aspect of myself. Yeah. And there's, there's definitely a, um, what is it? The thing that came to my mind was, uh, uh, the, the, the idea of an expert with, a, with a bit of a, what is it? A knowing chuckle coming over and saying, I see you've been doing it the hard way. Let me show you a trick. And, and there's yes. th- that, that idea came to mind of like, God, I want yes. as much as we feel like a fool at that moment, it's like, please, I would rather be foolish than make my life harder than it needs to be. Because I, I just wasn't aware of, of a shortcut that is, yeah. that, that is actually yeah. more, not uh, <clears throat> a lot of people conceptualize shortcuts as bad. It's like, well, why take the long way if there is a shorter way <clears throat> and it's not cutting corners, it's not reducing the quality. It's just, the right. mo- the, it's it's a matter of efficiency rather than than um, insufficient commitment to to quality. Yes, that that kind of a thing. Yes. So, but it's interesting to talk about that, Benjamin, because and I I don't want to go into this in detail because I do want to finish the dream. But sure, it's really important here because I think one of the um, uh, scripts that I've really worked to try and untangle in my life is that. Anything worth getting requires hard work. Oh, uh, yeah. So I actually think it's linked to this. Sure. That's a tough one, too, because you should be prepared to work hard. And some things do require hard work. And some things are very simple and, they, yeah. and, and very easy. And yeah. uh, you shouldn't necessarily feel like you're cheating just because something came to you naturally. Yes. Like, I don't feel like I'm yes. cheating because I can do this dream thing. I'm actually very humble that, that this is just how my brain works and I get to share it with people. So, you know, I don't, I don't feel bad about it at all. I'm actually excited and happy to share it with yeah. people, even if I don't understand yeah. it and I can't make it work and I couldn't tell you how to do it. <laughs> so, um, okay. So you, you did, uh, uh, you know, trying to help you uh, manage the time and whatnot. So now we're moving into the living room and this is actually 
your your impression of it is this is gorgeous. It's like miles above the the, the appearance of the kitchen. Aesthetically, it's the most beautiful, beautiful room. It's tasteful. It is so much natural light, high ceilings. It's airy and it's just magnificent. It's got like a, um, it's just so beautiful, but it's empty. I'm the only one there. Oh, wow. No one else is viewing that room. So that's the part of me that I think there's untapped potential. I was going with that. There's a yeah. part of me that no one gets to see. I think so too. What do you and think? no, no, yeah, no, that's great. If that's what it feels like to you, I'm I'm almost certain that's exactly what it is. But then why? Why did you show yourself? this aspect of yourself this untapped potential in this way um it's interesting that there's no other people there you are completely alone it's a space it's maybe a space you only show yourself it's only a, an aspect of yourself yeah. only you are aware of yeah. you know, that, that, that yeah. you haven't either shown to other people that they haven't seen or an accident or, or that no one's complimented you on or um it, it, and then what what is that aspect so it's it's tied up with the concept yeah. of a living room it's tied up with the concept of all of these great things you know it's it's very aesthetically pleasing but also in a tasteful way it's not gaudy or garish or no, bright it's not bright so colors tasteful. it's tasteful oh, no. so there's a very um yeah. what is it uh cuz tasteful is one word but there's um it's an aesthetic yeah and it's a, it's a magnificent and it's peaceful. To it. peaceful it's peaceful as well it's high peaceful. ceilings natural light there's lots of space um it seems like the thing that comes to my mind is it's a space that you're uh maybe not entirely an aspect of yourself you're not entirely comfortable being proud of or showing off to other people you're in not you have not yet chosen to invite people in yeah something yeah. along those lines, but you're showing us to yourself I going, I don't know what it is. Yeah. 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 I, and I don't know if we're going to get to that either too, but, but it's, I think it's powerful enough to say, what is, what is this side of me or this, this competence yeah. that I have this, uh, yeah. you know, uh, some additional value or worth in inherent to me that I have not chosen to show other people. And then you meditate on that and something, you know, something oh, well, probably, oh, well. yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Probably come along. Um, but it also might be, a. I mean, how did you, any emotions surface when you were in there? Uh, all, all. Okay. And wonder, emotion of awe. Like, I think I used the word gobsmacked somewhere, but I don't know if it was related to that. I think it was. When I walk into the living area, it is so stunning and I'm gobsmacked. Okay. It was all. So it might actually be a part of yourself that you are certain is present, but you haven't even found yourself in a way that like the discovery of it is stunning in that, in that way. It could be, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, yeah. I don't know either that like, if you can't, I think part of it where, where I was going with some of that was, I think this might be a part of yourself. You're embarrassed to put forward as something for public consumption in a way you're um what is it when we feel so someone who is um very pretty reticent reticent well, yeah. someone, someone who's very pretty and someone says you're very pretty and they go oh, i'm not and they really believe it they believe they're not even though they are so there's and i'm not saying it's, it's this yeah. is purely a physical thing i, I don't i don't know no that no no could be although but... it does feel it does actually feel physical the room well, no, it's feeling the room is. So if I compare it to the kitchen, the kitchen had like there was a buzz. The primary experience of the kitchen was the atmosphere in the kitchen, whereas the primary experience in this room is the magnificence. Yeah, there's there's very much like, a, a visual physical. visual it's beauty visual. to it. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. a visual. Yeah. So I mean, without getting to. I don't know. This is, this is a touchy thing to get into with some people is like 
tell me what you wish you were, what part of you you wish was better. And, and if, especially if it's related to your appearance or something, I'm not, I'm not asking those questions. I'm not, I'm not even going yeah. there because yeah. that is a hard thing to, for someone to say and be honest about if it were the case, but it's also, yeah. it's just a very awkward thing to broach and to get someone to, you know, it's like the pretty girl, you tell her she's pretty and she's God, she's embarrassed. She doesn't want to be, she doesn't want that kind of attention. She doesn't believe it. I'm using this as a metaphor more, more because, because there may be other aspects of yourself where you're like, I think I might be good at this, but it feels, I was trying to find the right word to it. It feels um, self narcissistic, feels self aggrandizing to say, look, yes. at how, look at how good yes. I am. So this, but this, it, but it didn't feel that way because the room didn't feel gaudy or showy or fee. It yeah. felt tasteful. It actually felt understated elegance. Yeah, exactly. So I think there's a, um, at the very least, a part of you that you know is worthy of being seen that it would, that you're like, why haven't, why haven't I shown this off to anyone else? And that's, that's where we get into that idea of in the dream, you're being brutally honest with yourself in terms of saying, no, I'm not narcissistic. I really am that good in this aspect. But then you wake up and the waking side of you goes, well, that's, I'm just not comfortable being that braggadocious. I'm not comfortable, uh, uh, sharing that part of myself in a look at me, look at how aesthetically pleasing I am in this regard. I, I, I run across that too. Like, I don't like compliments. Someone says, Hey, you did a really good job. I'm like, Oh, please don't let me really don't please. Uh, you just stop telling me how good I am. Me, I, I can't let me, let me it's horribly think about this. Yeah. 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 We, we can, we can leave that for it's what it wonderful is. Wonderful food for thought. It's yeah. incredible, but it's, yeah. So this is the aspect of self that is underplayed and I need to go and yeah. think about yeah, okay, but like your good. your honest self assessment is no, it's I really have some value in this department. It's like why am I not sharing it with others? Why is this room empty? Why is it not being appreciated by other people? Because um, maybe because I haven't shared it with them or they can't see it. Uh, I haven't put it on display. Uh, um, was was there any other action or behavior or or um, experience no. in that room? How did no, you... I felt kind of like I was standing still in wonderment, taking it all in. Yeah. And then eventually you had a thought to move on to another place or something called you to another place. You something grabbed your attention. How did you go to the next area room? I, I think I just found myself in the next room. Another, another, another scene change. Yeah. I think they were just, I don't, there was at the end, I remember walking from the second last room to the last room, but I think I just found myself in this third room. Okay. What was that room? Now this was the parents room. Okay. The bedroom, the marital bedroom. Any of the features of that place uh, stand out? No, it was just, it was pleasant, but there was nothing, and I didn't stay there very long. It was pleasant. It was, again, not full of anyone. It was just me, um, and it just felt like... Um, you know, when you go into a stranger's room, like you don't hover there. It's their private space, right? Okay. So for me, it really felt to me like an ex uh, aspect of my private self. I don't know if it's known to me or unknown to me. I'm not sure we can explore that. Yeah. That I'm not broaching. Sure. That is interesting, too. We're going from, um, we're going deeper and deeper in in some ways i'm starting to see yes. a little bit of a through light of like we you are. go literally You'll from the outside through the uh public crowded yes. kitchen yes. place to the Correct. aesthetically beautiful place now empty Correct. to a very core like what is the you know bedrooms stand out in our mind as as being a lot of things it's a place where uh we get naked and change clothes we're very vulnerable it's a place yeah. we, we go to sleep yeah. um it's yes. it's the place we don't i mean it's not a lot of people in our life we invite into our yeah, bedroom it's a literally, place. It's literally a husband garage. maybe the kids come in and jump on the bed with you occasionally it's like you have to be really close to someone to get that into that room of their house. Yes. So, and it was like, I wanted to honor that. So I, I, I stayed there like fleetingly. And mm -hmm. then I moved to the next room. It was a fleeting experience. Yeah, definitely. And you had this kind of, um, this feeling that it was, so it, in your mind, you've, you've made this house, not your own. It's someone else's. So you're, you got a little distance from it. You're like, okay, well let's imagine I'm not, 
this isn't about me, really. It's about someone else. So I, now, <laughs> now, I, now I can look at it and not not ask myself tough questions. I just need to see it for what it is. Uh, you've and this made it- was her parents' bedroom. It was very clear it wasn't my bedroom. Yeah. But, so there was a bit of a defense going on there. Right? Yeah, and you needed to... What you <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also that too, we, we, you know, one a little bit of a once removed type of thing just to give ourselves some, you know, objectivity. But even being in there, like you kind of lean into the feeling, or at least it stands out to you that this is a stranger's space and I sh- shouldn't, shouldn't linger. You, you yeah. that if we look at it in that yeah. once removed type of way of like, if you yeah. said, this is me, or this is one aspect of myself that maybe I don't want to look at too closely, that it's a little, little uncomfortable to, to, to Correct. think about. And I mean, the one thing that comes to my mind too, is the one thing I didn't mention because it's uncomfortable for me too. I mean, a bedroom is uh, the marital bed. So, so to speak is where you have sex. Yes. That's where you are the most intimate yes. with another human being. Uh, um, unless you get a little freaky and then the kitchen sometimes comes into play, but <laughs> you know, it's all, it's all personal. Um, but yeah, that's usually the bedroom stand out for that kind of a thing. It's the, the place of vulnerability and, and sexual intimacy uh, very specifically. So there may be something there going on with you. Um, and it may not be, may be sexual necessarily. Um, I think but... it's vulnerability. I think it's intimacy and vulnerability beyond that. I think it's actually beyond that. In fact, I know it's beyond that mm-hmm. because it didn't have a sexual feel, the room at all. It didn't evoke that, oh, I can't stay there because, you know, people are having sex in that mm-hmm. bed. It just felt there was a privacy and a, there was something I shouldn't be looking at. Yeah. Not definitely. in a sexual sense, in a, in a vulnerable. Intimate sense. Yeah. yeah. I think Intimate that's. Sense. Yeah. And that's, you know, I just needed to mention that to say, okay, that's another um, aspect of bedrooms in general, but they do very strongly associate with vulnerability and intimacy, especially intimacy. And we were, uh, we were talking about the idea of each layer going deeper and deeper into more yeah. private spaces. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, so you didn't really have any much of an experience there other than that feeling of the space and you needed to show that yes. to yourself for some reason. And if we're taking that idea of a progression, the next space is the most inner right. private core type right. of space and how did you, you you do remember moving out into the hall to get there or no this again scene change, scene, scene change into well, I'm gonna start another page here now i think these two rooms are linked okay i think they they very much are linked but and i and i know that this is the deepest aspect yeah because when it got to the last room, I couldn't, I actually felt contaminated. I couldn't stay there for a second. So now I'm going in downstairs. It feels like it's downstairs, whereas the parents' room was upstairs. Mm-hmm. So it feels like it's downstairs, and I'm looking for Hirsch, the hostage's room. And I want to, because like he's the person I know, and I've been following all these months. And I open a room, it was one of the kids' bedrooms, and initially I thought it was his room. There's stuff like clothes on the floor, you know, like a messy child's room. And then I realized, initially I thought it was male stuff, but then I realized it was female stuff. It was, he's got two sisters in real life. Mm -hmm. It was one of his sister's rooms. So I kind of, then I thought, no, I've got to go, I find Hirsch's room and I left that room and I opened, there was a door at the end of the passage that was, I could almost, it was not hidden, but I could almost have walked past it without seeing it. And I noticed it and I opened it and I realized that was Hirsch's room because it felt, it was the feeling of death mm. and it was the feeling of suffering and that's when I thought, I don't want this energy near me. I closed the door, and I think that was when I woke up, the last the last part of the dream. Yeah. Okay. Um... And I'm happy to talk about what death and loss represents to me. That's Because I think that's been a big part of my healing journey is around that because my I lost my father when mm. I was nine years old. Oh wow. And yeah. he was dying yeah, he was dying from when I was five years old. 
And so loss and death have been a very prominent part of my healing and letting go. And um, yeah, and so that's the part of me that fears loss and death so much. And mm-hmm. that was almost too much for me to face into. I knew the issue in this case, yeah. and I closed the door quickly. And it's funny because I'd searched for it. for So you know, I went to his sister's room, and I'd actually searched for it. And when I found that part of me, it was too scary. It was like a, it was a mission to get there. And then I lasted a second in that room. Yeah, definitely. There's... Um... What comes to to my mind is the idea of uh, watching a scary movie, and, and the reason is that uh, there's there's been some where I'm like fascinated by the concept, and I'm I'm you know almost morbidly obsessed with getting to see it, and after it's done, I I realize that was a horrifying experience. Why did I put myself through that? Why did I want yes. that? I did not enjoy it at all. So that's what came to my mind that, that, that yes. some, some kind of resonance with this thing of like, I can't not look, but I wish I could forget. I ever saw it. Like, I don't want to, I didn't enjoy the experience. There's something, something to that there. Um, yes, I think you're right. I don't know where, where your mind goes with that idea of dwelling in something perhaps like, um, I don't so, know. What, how do you feel about your obsession with the, with the Hirsch case and, 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 I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. I'm obsessed with it in real life. Like in my waking life, I follow it every single day. I want so much for this young man to come back. I know he's going to be disabled because he's lost an arm, but I look at his parents. They're so relatable to me. And I just want to put my arm around his mother particularly and say, everything's going to be okay. Your son will come back. And I don't know that everything will be okay. He might be dead. I'm sure he possibly is, you know. There's a good chance, yeah. There's a very good chance that he hasn't had the right medical care and he's dead. And so I'm, it's like, when I talk about this, it almost feels like I'm trying to soothe soothe myself. There's a part of me that it's like I'm having a conversation with my inner child and I'm saying, let me hug you. And I am checking in on that aspect of myself in a manic way. Um, And I don't think that checking in is all that healthy. I've had a number of people tell me, including my own mother, say to me, you need to stop this. Mm. You know, it's bringing you down. It's, you know, and and I actually said to my cousin the other day, she said she doesn't even follow it. And I said, but I keep thinking, what if, that were my family. I would want people to be holding the space for me. Yeah. And he said that you get it. That you can't hold the space from this and this place of anxiety. And so that's what's going on in the in my waking life. That's what's coming up as you're talking. For sure. Yeah. And that's um. It, it was inspiring some some other thoughts in me too. The idea of specifically the idea of the only thing worse than knowing he's dead is never knowing what happened to him uh that the 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 um and whether that's absolutely true or not but that's what crossed my mind uh that idea of you know can you let yourself let go of it and never know what would that look like to do so uh you might be having trouble with that concept which i've had i've had some obsessions like that too where it's like i just have to know i can't and that's why they end of the scary movie and like and then i watch it and i'm like i wish i didn't do that why was i so obsessed with the idea of needing to see it for myself and then going well that was awful like <laughs> so I, and then yeah. not even that like some scary internet videos um there are some things i will never watch because i had par- them partially described to me um if anyone ever tries to show you a video entitled funky town do not watch it um it's uh, relatively brief and it's awful and it's uh, not something anybody should see, but it's something that really happened. It is actual bad, bad things. Uh, funky town. Yeah. Do not watch that video. And it's not the song, but it's, that's, I think they call it that because that song is playing in the video and it's, it's awful. So, um, I actually have a vivid enough imagination that, uh, I was able to see some of the things that they were describing of like, I don't think I could actually watch that happen to a person. 
Uh, anyway, long story short uh, on that. Some, sometimes we have those feelings of um, you have to know and you can't let it go until you do know. And then you regret it. But what, what were you going to do? You just can't let it go. And, and how do you let it go if you if you judged it was necessary to do so? Um, okay. And all of these things swirling around and we've gone deeper and deeper into like intercourse stuff. You've gone through that, you know, the parents room and then you go on a quest to like, let's go find this kid's actual room. Like you, you assign yourself the task of in, the, you assign your dream self, the task of pursuing what your waking self is pursuing knowledge of this person, uh, maybe as a person or their fate in, in real life in general. And the, you, part of the searching process is maybe, and you've probably gotten to know a little bit about the sisters. I mean, you know, he has sisters. How many people know uh, about the family of a, of a victim? Uh, not, not many. They, sometimes they know they have parents or they just know a person died or bad things happened to them. Yeah, well, I follow the Instagram account now, you know, oh, I'm following yeah. the bring Hirsch home Instagram account and the, the sisters are talking on it. The mother's gotcha. talking on it, the father. So I'm like, and I'm liking every post and sending my love and, so I would love to dis, to to discuss and decipher what is this obsession represent for me? Why am I so? Why do I feel like I've got to hold the space for a strange family who I've never met, at the detriment of my own mental health? Yeah, that might be ultimately what this whole dream was kind of about. Is like uh, getting to the oh, you're gonna start barking now. Stop it. Stop it. He's telling me it's almost time to go. You, you got to go too soon. I think you're almost out of time. <laughs> too. Um, I think that that's probably broad strokes with this whole dream was about is like looking into yourself through the different layers, getting down to why is this particular story so enthralling? Why is it so meaningful to me? Um, yeah. And what do I do about that? What do I do with the fact that it is meaningful to me, that I do have strong feelings about it? Um, you know, no one would say it was healthy to say, just live in denial. Well, I'll just pretend like I don't care. Well, you do. Okay. Maybe if you understand why you can help resolve it in a way that's like, you know, like what would be an ideal outcome that kind of meets in the middle is like, you are able to put it down, but you message the family saying, Hey, please let me know if you find out anything. And then you don't worry about it. And you trust that if he's alive and they get him back, you're going to hear about it. And you don't have to obsess over, you don't have to follow it every day. That's got, that would say that's kind of meeting in the middle between obsessing and completely forgetting. I don't know that you can do either one and yeah. be, you know, you can't let it go, yeah. but you can't live like this every day either. So meeting in the middle might be a, that might be a healthy way forward. Um, or you'll find right. some other, some other compromise that's going to be based on where you feel this, you know, the, the root of the obsession lies. And, and it probably is wrapped up in your sense of death and loss and, and, you know, going back to being very young, um, it was it my mom lost her mother at uh, 16 and that changed her life, changes your life to lose a parent. It does. Uh, when, when mine go in, in the next 10, 20 years or whatever, that'll change my life too at that point. Um, but so much more when you're small. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Come here. <laughs> Danny, I want food. I want He's probably going to go I pee. Think, I think you're right. Okay, no, I, I won't stand between you and your dog's pee. But, um, <laughs> that's, I mean, a, that's, a, that's probably a wise choice. Yeah. <laughs> just a way of closure <laughs> for your sake. Come here. A way of closing this. I feel like Come here. it's the part of me, the unhealed part of me, that was part of a family that was suffering. In yeah. the not knowing for so long. And I've just, you know, and that's the unhealed. Yeah, it may very well be. And I don't think we need to try to nail it down any more than that. I think sleeping on it and, and, and meditating on it over the next however many day, days and weeks is is going to be what's best for you. I think we, we try to force an answer of like, here's exactly what it is and what you're supposed to do about it. We're probably, no, we're probably, no. probably going to get it wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> but Thank you. yeah, that's, 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 you, that's one of the, man. yeah, that's one of the best things I try to do is just help people um, see a little more clearly what it is they were considering. I, I consider dreams, uh, you know, I think about them as thought experiments. Like what if, what if I look at myself or this other thing through this lens, uh, how can I understand it better? Um, so, 
Yeah. Great. That's Great about podcast. It. <laughs> well, thank Great you much. Podcast. Thank oh, you so much. Yeah, and then we'll uh, of course hang out for like just two minutes afterwards uh, after we wrap up, and we'll uh, just a bit post show. It's another thing I don't tell people uh, very often is we do a little post show debrief. Doesn't last long. Just how do you feel? Everything okay? You want to talk about it? Um, off off air stuff that's like you know not for public consumption. So well, uh, if you are satisfied for for the moment, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and wrap uh, wrap it up. Um, uh, and I got to do the uh, the housekeeping. Would you kindly like, share, subscribe, uh, tell your friends. Always need more uh, volunteer dreamers, viewers for the video game streams. 17 currently available works of historical dream literature. The most recent, The Fabric of Dreams by Catherine Taylor Craig. All this and more at BenjaminTheDreamWizard.com. Also BenjaminTheDreamWizard.Locals.com. Uh, and really, yeah, don't forget to smash the like button on your way out. Uh, share the show with your friends, all the good stuff. I really mean it. And uh, Gabrielle, thank you for being here. I couldn't do this without people willing to let me inside their head and poke around so i appreciate you <laughs> thank you thank you so much appreciate it as well and everybody out there thanks for listening mm-hmm.